Fan bases on the internet, they're chaotic, exciting, sometimes scary, but also very entertaining. You stand Zara Larson. Originally, I thought it would be fun to rank all the different fan bases that a lot of people have deemed the worst on the internet. But the more that I thought about it, I realized that if I actually want to find the worst fan base on the internet, I gotta pit you guys against each other. So I made a list of all the fan bases online that I've seen a lot of people declare are the worst that they've ever seen. And today we're gonna figure out which one's the most insane. Very quick disclaimer, I'm gonna flash on screen for a second, that way we don't have to sit through me trying to explain my bird brain logic. But seriously though, I like all of these fan bases. I want to make that clear. We're just talking about some of the chaotic shit you guys get up to sometimes. Before we get into the bracket though, quick thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring. They're an online consignment and thrift store. I like it a lot just because the thought of battling a bunch of thrift store fanatics for vintage justice that they're going to resell for like 80 bucks online sounds like my personal hell. ThreadUp just makes it a lot easier to buy secondhand because you can shop by size, item brand, or color, and there's new items every day. It's basically the perfect combination between the ease of online shopping, but you still get the perks of buying secondhand, whether that's getting a good deal or just wanting to be more environmentally friendly. I find the clothes I get on there by searching specific keywords for stuff that I'm into, like for example, knitwear. I know that's been a pretty big trend for the past few years. I ended up finding this really cute hat by doing that. I love the colors and textures on this thing, and it also reminds me a lot of the hat that Miranda Cosgrove wore in the About You Now music video. I also got this really cool vest. It's got a thinner material than the sweater ones I've been seeing a lot, but I like it just because then I can layer with it without it looking like I'm wearing a bulletproof vest. If we're talking cozy though, this fleece that I picked up is ridiculously soft and warm. I'm always tuned in for this kind of stuff though because it is so cold where I live. I also recently found this really sick sweater just by searching graphic sweater. This was actually from MSGM for originally $286, but I got it for $56.99. I also picked up some jeans too. These originally had a retail price of $27.99, but I got them for $19.60. If you like some of the stuff that I got, ThreadUp actually has a new feature where you can see what I picked up as well as some similar options. And you can actually get 35% off your first order this time instead of the usual 30. You can shop my picks with the link below in the description box and use my code KC for that extra 35% off your first order plus free shipping. But otherwise, thanks again to ThreadUp for sponsoring and let's get back into the video. All right, so allow me to introduce you to phase one. Our first pairing are Minecraft YouTuber and Stranger Things stands. One of these, is not like the other. I'm kidding. Please don't dox me. I'm gonna be honest, I don't understand why people are so obsessed with this game. Back in my day, we played games with cool characters, like a penguin with hair. I paid 30 real life dollars for this, by the way, on multiple occasions. Actually, now that I think about it, IMVU is like the only game where they've injected their characters with the appropriate amount of yes. What I'm trying to say here though, is that I just don't get the Minecraft thing. So the Minecraft YouTuber thing is even more bewildering to me. But as with most intensely dedicated fan bases though, we get some very interesting fan material. I imagine different DSMP members would react if you got hurt. Oh my God, are you okay? You need a bandaid? You're hurt? Well, I'm colorblind, so... I think an asset of understanding, if you will, that I have from being a One Direction fan as a teenager is that I could look at this and go, wow, that's cringe. But I can't help the looming thought in the back of my mind telling me that if I had had TikTok when I was 14, I would be producing the exact same shit. Because these are essentially video versions of those imagines that used to be popular back then, and I ate those up. Hey, teenage Casey, can we imagine getting a fucking life, please? I think the most mystifying part about Stranger Things in general is that it's so shocking to me that a show with zero musical output happens to have so many fan songs. Like, you guys really really love to sing. It's like a local Denny's after high school musical over there. Here's the thing though, neither of these camps truly scare me. Worst comes to worst, I'm just gonna threaten them with having to book their own doctor's appointment over the phone. That should nuke most of them. But I think what gives Minecraft stands a little bit of an edge over the Stranger Things ones is that Stranger Things fans are a bit more seasonal. Like you can criticize the show during its hiatus and probably fly under the radar. Versus if you say anything remotely negative about a Minecraft YouTuber, you're probably fucked. All right, K-pop stands, let's go. These guys definitely get a very bad rap, but you know what? If Snapchat was released during my formative years, I would have gone crazy too. Not a day goes by that I don't see something coming from a K-pop stand that makes me wonder how exactly their brain works. And I mean that as the highest compliment possible. Why has she put the mic in there? What if her pussy make a sound? What do you mean, what if her pussy makes a noise? <laughs> They use that crazy to their advantage though, okay? They organize to a degree I have never seen in my life. For example, let me tell you a little story about a group called Luna. Long story short, their company kicked out a member who's trying to hold them accountable for mistreatment. And to try to divert attention, they immediately planned to release music without her, assuming that fans would just eat up new music. Wanna know what the fans do? destroy everything. The boycott was so effective that the company delayed their next music release. 
I don't think I've ever seen that before. The iron will these guys have is crazy admirable, but you guys do scare me a little sometimes, okay? I'm not gonna lie. I decided I'd pit them against the furries since they also seem to get a bad rap, but I feel like I should mention that I do have a slight bias against them. It has nothing to do with them being furries, but more so that the vessel for their hobby is one of my biggest fears. Like if I'm at some sort of like party or festival and there's a mascot there, I'm crossing the street. But seriously, humor me for a moment and try to get where I'm coming from. They're so unnerving because you never actually know what they're thinking. They've always got that dumbass smile plastered on their face, which means that if they decide that they want to kill you, you don't know until a unit of fleece is barreling towards you. And I don't know about you, but I do not trust myself to win that fight. Those things are massive and they get nasty. I've seen what they're capable of. I feel like rain first is also a thing I should probably mention. Of course, because they completely trashed the hotel the convention was held at and kept pelting cars with diapers, like used diapers. They do get up to some funny shit sometimes though. I love the concern as if he's not the same person that just rocked that guy's shit three seconds ago. And the guy in the back who like needed half a second to realize he did not want to be there. Two queens really do stand before me, but I think I have to go with K-pop stands. I think time has made a lot of people forget just how crazy Directioners were. What the fuck is this? I would like to see Harry Styles dead so he would stop ruining Louie and Eleanor's relationship. Oh my fucking god, is this a joke? Like by Take Me Home era, there were no marbles left in the brain. At that point, we were just running off the fumes of the British boy craze and pop music. And dare I say, life was pretty good living at that diluted. I don't know about you, but I had a ball. Now you might be confused by who I paired them against. Let me explain myself. I knew I had to include serial killer stands because they are a very well-known fandom right now and they're often deemed the worst, but they want to be seen that way. And that's why I don't want to give it to them. Nobody's walking around telling people they love Ted Bundy, expecting the people hearing that to go, wow, that's like so normal and well-adjusted of you. So I would just be giving them what they want. And I don't want to do that. So personally, I thought the best way to handle this would be to knock them out in the first round by a boy band that hasn't released a song in seven years. How humiliating. It makes sense in my brain. It's like bed mass. Okay, next we have Swifties versus Aryanators. Honestly, this is more of a battle of the lookalikes. Why these two inspire a factory of bootlegs is beyond me, but there are so many of them. I know an Aryanator went viral previously for tweeting from her fridge in an effort to stay on Twitter, but Swifties are even crazier in way more avenues. They'll Photoshop Starbucks promotions, buy out your local Target, keep you alive if it means it gets Taylor her number one. It's kind of inspiring, honestly. Slightly concerning as well, but Nothing great was ever done without a side eye or two. Toe to toe though, I'd have to bet on Swifties though. They're building you guys in test tubes. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. Another fan base we'll be talking about are the Colleen Hoover book stands. I will be referring to them as the Hoovers and I'm gonna be pitting them against the Funko people. Listen, if I walk into a room and there is a wall full of Funko Pops, it's instilling the same level of fear into me as if I were to walk into a library and it'd be filled with only Colleen Hoover books. While I will eventually be talking my shit about Miss Hoover, I have to give her one thing. While her books aesthetically are built like a package of Boom Chicka Pop, they are better than the other options in the genre. Like if The Secret History had a cover like this, I'm not reading that shit. I will judge a book by its cover have some class, and get off Canva. The Funkos though, I'm sorry, they freak me the fuck out. In theory, they are cute, but I saw Coraline. Those things look like trapped souls, and one day they're gonna wake up Toy Story style and beat the shit out of whoever's holding them hostage. And it's not gonna be me. You know what? I might help them actually. I think the Hoovers win this one though, because Funko people for the most part keep to themselves, Hoovers, on the other hand, are hiding behind every corner of the internet ready to jump you with an edit like this. Her walking home one night with her headphones in, Clueless. Him beating up the guys who were following her because he's the only one allowed to stalk her. Huh? Marvel stands versus Elon Musk. These two are basically just a dick riding competition. Like who is more deluded? The Marvel stand that thought that Spider-Man deserved an Oscar or the Elon Musk fan? A musky, if you will, who's permanently camped under his mentions to tell him how smart he is. I would argue the latter. Without a doubt in my mind, there is no fan of a TikTok star that can beat a Disney adult. Obviously, their reactions to some things, like a ride being closed, tend to be a bit dramatic. How do you do? How do you do? I mean, there's just something about that Disney magic. There was also this TikTok, which unfortunately the kid's name isn't actually Splash Mountain, it's Briar. But I think what scares me about them isn't the fact that they're obsessed with Disney, 
but what they're capable of. They can execute a plan like no one else in this bracket except K-pop stands. You hand them maps to any of these gigantic parks and they're gonna know the exact route you need to take to get to Space Mountain, have lunch with the princesses, and meet Blinko before noon so you can be in the front for the fireworks show. All well Disney bounding as Donald Duck. These are the kind of people you do not underestimate. The final pairing for phase one are Potterheads and Gamers. And you might be wondering, Casey, what the hell do you mean by gamers? That's incredibly broad. And you're right. I mean this specific genre of gamer. Potterheads kind of remind me of people who are really into astrology. They have the same issue as Directioners though. Like the peak is just long past, and even if you have hallmark moments like My Immortal, it's just not enough to keep up with the gamers. Now this would be an interesting matchup. I feel like they have the same levels of like parasocial Delulu. I'm not saying everyone in the fanbase has it, but seeing stuff like this and this is kind of common. For some reason, I'm envisioning this as like an actual battle between the two, and I'm inclined to believe that the K-pop stands are more prepared for a fight because they're always practicing dances and they have weapons. And some of those look like they would fucking hurt. One of them shaped like a gun for God's sake. Listen, we gotta be honest with ourselves here. Taylor Swift was here long before One Direction was formed, and she's gonna be here long after. We are simply not the united front we once were. We wouldn't even be remotely intimidating if it weren't for the- If you can give the Larrys one thing, they have persevered through this hiatus like no other faction of the One Direction fanbase. Their resolve, despite everyone telling them that they're wrong, including the actual people in the ship they're so obsessed with. Even then though, I just don't feel like there are enough of them in comparison to the Swifties. Okay, the Hoovers versus the Muskies. I think what this boils down to is whether I find this genre of reading more insane or this one. Anyone can work hard when they feel motivated. It's the ability to keep going when work isn't exciting that makes the difference. Thank you for this baby, she says from the back seat. He's beautiful, I laugh. You're responsible for the beautiful part, Rachel. The only thing he got from me was his balls. She laughs. She laughs hard. Oh my God, I know, she says. They're so big. We both laugh at our son's big balls. See, intensity level, I'd argue that Disney adults and gamers are actually matched up pretty evenly. But I think the difference is that your average Disney adult just does not have the same grit. They're obsessed with movies about like the power of friendship and taking the high road. Gamers on the other hand are like permanently angry at everything. Like if you're already crying over a log ride, this is not gonna be ending well for you. Welcome to the quarterfinals, everyone. See, I think that Swifties might actually think that they could be able to take on the K-pop stands. I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. You don't stand a chance. <laughs> One snide comment about Jimin from BTS releasing from Blackpink and it's over. You better hope the Taylor's got room in that jet because you've got about 10 seconds before your replies are being spammed with fan cams, your home address is online, stands are banging at your door ready to steal your albums and burn them. They'll even order a damn bus. Here's the thing about the Hoovers. If you get in an argument with one of them, they're eventually going to stand down. Read out a line or two from November 9 and they're gonna stop. They don't want to go down for that shit publicly. Gamers, on the other hand, will say the most insane, self-incriminating shit you have ever heard in your life over a cluster of pixels. And because of that, I think they need to go to the final. So two insane fan bases stand in front of me. And I'd argue that they're two conflicting versions of insane. We have K-pop stands who can get a bit crazy, but that crazy is also very entertaining. And they supply a lot of fun. Like, am I supposed to not get a giggle out of the conspiracy that people think that Jungkook is Princess Diana reincarnated? Are you serious right now? On the other hand, we have a more pure definition of insane, since gamers showing they're crazy usually involves takes like this. Very normal things going on over there. So I guess the true question I'm facing right now is whether I should choose the fun choice or the serious choice. And I want to choose the fun choice. I'm sorry, okay? I'm weak. Someone call Navis. She's coming home. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun doing it. I know I put the disclaimer earlier, but I really can't stress enough how lighthearted this is supposed to be. But again, if you guys want to offer your input, I'm going to be putting it all up on my Instagram story in poll format. That way we can figure out which fan base you guys think is the worst. I thought it would be a cute idea. We'll see if it ends up working well. And that'll be live when this video goes live. But if you did enjoy the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. You can also follow me on Twitch or my second channel where it's condensed versions of those streams. But or else you can follow me outside of YouTube, I'll have down in the pinned comment below. Don't forget, you can get 35% off your first order, plus free shipping at ThreadUp if you use my code Casey. So definitely take advantage of that if you're interested. But otherwise, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.